Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for what are going to be some very niche book recommendations. I have to say this is one of my favourite things to ask for and to also supply. I quite often find myself on Twitter or Instagram or even Goodreads asking for super niche book recommendations. Perhaps I really really want at that moment in time to read a historical FF romance where one of the characters is a widow. Like that that's how specific I want. Or I want to read a science fiction novel where there's not one single human being in the entire universe. And I know I'm not the only person who gets those really specific cravings when it comes to what they're reading. So as somebody who's read quite a lot, I thought I would ask on Instagram what your very niche specific recommendation requests were. So what very niche genres or book specifications or plot lines are you currently looking for? And I will try and recommend to you some from my past. I always get way more re requests than I'm ever expecting when I post these things on Instagram. So there's no way I'm gonna be able to attempt to answer all of these recommendation request but I am going to give it my best shot to answer quite a few especially those I feel like I've got a really solid recommendation for. So I have scanned through these but I haven't pre-prepared a list of recommendations so we're kind of going to go off the cuff and see what I can come up with. Without further ado therefore let's get in to the niche book recommendations. First up we have Sapphic with Dragons so this is also my ultimate niche recommendation and I know a lot of people would say for this The Priory of the Orange Tree but I haven't actually read that one yet so I can't speak to it. I may also have some possible announcements coming very soon about a Sapphic Dragon novel written by yours truly and I'm not going to say any more than that but I do have a recommendation for this and that is The Queen of E.F. Laria by Effie Calvin. Now I have recommended this book countless times before so I won't dwell on it too much but this is a fancy novel where it's no more expected that you would fall in love with someone of the opposite sex than the same sex and in which we have two princesses who have been betrothed to one another. There is also dragons, now at the start of this novel the dragons are seen as the enemy but like with any good fancy world building it's a little bit more complex than that and you definitely get to know a lot more about dragon folklore uh, as the novel goes on plus there's even more dragons in book three in which the original characters return so definitely one to check out if you like your your dragons and your sapphic romances. We then have a contemporary story about boys coming of age, music and quirky friendships. So this is a contemporary novel, it's a couple of decades out of date but it really just feels like it's perfect for this very specific request and that is The Commitments by Roddy Doyle. So this is a piece of Irish literature which is set in the 1980s and also came out in the 1980s following a group of friends who decide to form a soul band in Dublin. And you really can't get more musical than this novel because lyrics and music is constantly incorporated incorporated throughout. It's hilarious and what I would probably describe as a contemporary classic so definitely I think falls within the request you're looking for. Then next up we have historical feminist fantasy that is like Juliet Merillier but isn't Juliet Merillier and I definitely noticed a couple of people telling me not to recommend <laughs> Juliet Merillier but to recommend books similar in these requests and I feel targeted but also I get it, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to actually recommend a book I've only just read because I very much feel it gave me Juliet Merillier vibes whilst I was reading it and it also falls into that historical fantasy setting with feminist themes which is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is actually a retelling or a novel inspired by a traditional folk ballad called The Two Sisters. You don't however need to be familiar with the original folk tale to read the novel and this is a book about three siblings who are living in Britain on the cusp of the medieval era so we're just coming out of ancient times. The Romans have only very recently left Britain behind and we're now transitioning into that new stage in British history and two of the siblings are sisters and then the third is a trans boy although he is not accepted as a boy by most of his peers or his family because they don't understand him and we get the perspective of all three of those siblings throughout the books as they go on their own journeys of self-discovery as their land is becoming less in tune with them magically whilst their father the king transitions to Christianity and away from the old religion and how they sort of reconnect with the land and the old traditions and what it means to them. It's really really beautifully written based on a traditional folk ballad and definitely has those Juliet Merillier vibes. Next up is historical fiction about witches and I feel like I've done some really appropriate reading recently for these recommendations because I have also just been 
been reading The Cunning Women by Elizabeth Lee, which is set in 1620s Lancashire following a family who have been dubbed as witches, as touched by the devil, and live sort of ostracised from the rest of their community, although there are those that communicate with them in order to seek out like remedies, etc. And we follow the perspective of the eldest daughter from this family who is learning the craft, as well as a young man from the village who's the son of a farmer, and they're forbidden romance amidst this turmoil of them being seen as dark and wicked and rejected from society. It's also set just following the Union of the Crown, which is when James VI became very into witch hunts. <laughs> so definitely has those historical witchy vibes. We then have a book with a Greek god as the protagonist and not a side character, and I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say it, Circe by Madeleine Miller. It's one of the few that I've actually read that takes that aspect of mythology and runs with it and it is just an incredible book. We then have a non-fantasy book set in Scotland. I did mention this one in another video recently but any opportunity to give it some more contemporary press and that is Sunset Song by Lewis Grassett Gibbon. This is a novel set in the years leading up to during and after the First World War in Scotland and they follow the story of Chris Guthrie, a young woman who has been um, raised by a farming family and her relationship with the land and whether she wants to choose to stay on living as a farmer or move to the city and also her coming of age as a young woman in early 20th century Scotland. It's really stunning, really incredible and really stands the test of time. An immersive fae or fairy book with romance and lots of vivid imagery. It's got to be Emma ham here and the one I have to recommend is Heart of the Fae. So this is actually the first in a series of fairy tale retellings and Heart of the Fae is inspired by Beauty and the Beast but it is one that very heavily interacts with the Fae. We have a main character who is a healer as well as another character who is a fairy prince and it is about their coming together amidst a plague that has spread the land and which our healer is attempting to heal. And once you've read Heart of the Fae you then have in front of you a whole host of other incredible fey romance novels. This is my favourite because it's a book where the main characters are not humans because I have a book where basically all the characters are not humans, they are instead dragons. And that is Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton. I wish this book was a series. I'm absolutely head over heels in love with it. It is a novel that reads like a Austen or a Trollope, like a Regency drama, but all of the characters are dragons. And really, there is no other way I can describe it to you or sell it to you. Either that does it for you or it doesn't, but trust me, it is well executed and well worth checking out. We then have time travel translated fiction. So I have one for this, but it is an excellent one, and that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshi Kazukawa Gucci, which is a translated novel originally written in Japanese that takes place at a small cafe in Japan where one specific seat at one specific table allows the customer or the staff member to travel in time but only within that space. So if you want to visit something that happened in the past it had to have happened in that cafe. Same goes with the future and more so than being like a time travel adventure story it is a book about human emotion and human experiences and human connection and it is so beautiful. We then have a dark gothic mystery set in a boarding school. So I've actually read two boarding school-esque stories recently but one was set at a university so I'll go for the one that was actually set in a boarding school and that is Madam by Phoebe Wynn. I loved this book. It was so compelling. It's about a young classics teacher in 1992 who goes off to take up a position at an elite boarding school in Scotland where the richest of the rich of the elitist of the elite of British society send their daughters and it's about her being introduced to this entirely new world and also the secrets surrounding this boarding school and what these girls are being raised to do and also why on earth she's been chosen as their new teacher because it is very rare for them to take on new staff. It is so dark and intriguing and like I said, like an absolute page turner. Absolutely loved it. We then have a fairy tale from a woman's perspective that's a set a long time ago and is a journey. I'm just gonna say it and I'm gonna say it really quickly, but Daughter of the Forest by Juliet Marillier. Okay, moving on. We then have a request for a cozy mystery that's not violent, but also isn't uh, Sherlock Holmes or Agatha Christie, presumably because the requester has already read those. And I do have one that is excellent for fans of both Christie and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which is the Red House Mystery by A. A. Milne. Yes, that's A. A. Milne who wrote Way the Pooh. He also published a detective novel, very much like I said, in the vein of Holmes or Christie, and I adore it. This is such 
a fantastic little crime novel. I wish again there had just been a whole series of these in A.A. Milne had written a bunch of detective tales but I also like the slight allusion to Sherlock Holmes that crop up within the novel story and it's just like one of those books that very much falls into cosy crime that I don't hear talked about enough because it's brilliant. We then have Small Town by the Sea and Magic Realism so I think I'm taking a little bit of liberty with this recommendation but I think it might be something you'd be interested in and that is The Grace Keepers by Christy Logan. I say that because a large part of this book is actually set on the water because most of the people in this world live on houseboats and we follow a character who is part of a travelling circus that lives on this houseboat but we also follow another character who lives on land and it does have those by the sea small community vibes so I think it might fulfill what you're looking for. It also has allusions to possible magic and is set in this world that's very ethereal and unlike our own but there's not a lot of actual tangible fantastical elements within it so I think it is closer to magic realism despite the setting and it is really beautiful. We then have an FF romance between women over 50 and I haven't actually read this one, it's the only time I'm going to do this in the video but I wanted to make sure you got this recommendation in case you hadn't seen it already. It's on my TBR and it's by an author I have read and really enjoyed in the past so I still feel like I can vouch for it and I, I do want to read it myself which is Mrs Martin's Incomparable Adventure by Courtney Milan. So this is a Regency romance about two women where the protagonist and her love interest are over 50. So hopefully that's what you're looking for. We then have a book with a Romani main character which is preferably historical fiction. So this one is and isn't historical fiction and it's The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargreaves. So this book is inspired by Dracula by Bram Stoker but it takes place a long time before the events of Dracula by Bram Stoker and because of that there are allusions to vampires and the existence of vampires within this novel but it very much reads like historical fiction and it is far more interested in the historical fiction side of the narrative of a young Romani girl living in Transylvania during the time in which the man who inspired Dracula lived. A man who historically did enslave Romani people and it touches on those themes and has, like I said, a Romani protagonist and is also just a really excellent book. Fantasy with a focus on politics and diverse characters. So I think I would perhaps suggest something like Fires of the Faithful by Naomi Kritzer because for me this reads as much more politically heavy fantasy. It's not super focused on romance for example, it's about the world and the political struggle which very much plays out through two religious factions in this world. So there's a lot of like in-depth building of religion, the old, the new and how that is used politically. Plus our main character is also queer and coming to terms with that so it has that sort of diversity in sexuality representation in there. Then we have a feminist and female centred dystopian. I'm going to go for one I read quite a long time ago so I haven't recommended recently which is Only Ever Years by Louisa Neal. I was actually recently reading a book which very much recalled the experience of reading Only Ever Years to me although it wasn't a dystopian and it reminded me how much I enjoyed enjoyed that book. It's very impactful and it's very hard hitting and it does deal quite explicitly with issues like eating disorders but it's an incredibly visceral look at the experience of particularly young women and girls in modern society but through a dystopian narrative. I have lost track at this point how many books I've recommended and how long I've been here so I'm just going to do one more um, in order to keep this video hopefully at a manageable length and that is for a fantasy with ace rep. So I've really not read enough of this and I would love more recommendations which is why I've also chosen to include it here quickly but the one I have read was Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. So this is definitely on the darker more supernatural side of fantasy but one of the main perspectives is a teenage girl who is asexual and it goes into detail more about her asexuality. She's not aromantic but she is asexual and I thought that the representation there was absolutely fantastic but like I said would love more recommendations as I'm sure would the person that asked for this one. So yes those are my super super niche book recommendations that hopefully fulfilled some of your super niche book requests. If you have your own answers for any of these specific recommendation requests, please do leave them in the comments down below because I would love to hear them. They're all super interesting niches that I really, really like. And in the meantime, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye everyone.